What's up guys, how are you guys doing? Welcome to 32 Teams, where I'll review all 32 teams in the intro after the 2022-23 season. This series will consist of an overview, regular season, postseason, player stats, team stats, and my overall opinion about the team. We finished the Western Conference, and now we're in the Eastern Conference. Today, we will review the Boston Bruins. Let's get started. The Boston Bruins participated in the NHL for the 99th time during the 2022-23 season. With a 3-2 overtime victory over the Carolina Hurricanes on November 25, 2022, the Bruins established a record for the most consecutive home victories to open the season 12 straight. On December 3rd, the streak reached 14. After losing in a shootout against the Vegas Golden Knights 4-3, three, three days later, the run was broken. Prior to falling 3-0 to the Seattle Kraken, they had also played 22 consecutive home games without suffering loss in regula regulation. The Boston Bruins were the quickest club to 80 points in the NHL history on Janu January 24, 2023, scoring their 88th standing point in their 47th game, breaking the previous mark of 49 games held by the Philadelphia Flyers in 1979-80 and Montreal Canadiens in 1943-44. The Bruins became the quickest club to, uh, to 100 points in NHL history on March 2, 2023, recording their 100 point in just 21 ga 61 games, breaking the breaking the previous mark of 62 games held by the 1976-1977 Stanley Cup champion Montreal Canadiens. The Bruins became the quickest club to 50 victories in a season in NHL history on March 11, 2023. Later on the same day, they also made history by becoming the first club to secure a playoff spot in an 82-game season and the third fastest team overall. With the victory over the Tampa Bay Lightning on March 25th, the Bruins claimed their third Atlantic Division Championship and the 27th overall. Five days later, on March 30th, they defeated the Columbus Blue Jackets in overtime to win their fourth President's Trophy. With 65 victories and 135 points, the Bruins broke the previous marks for both wins and points in a season held by the Tampa Bay Lightning in 2018-19, the Detroit Red Wings in 1995-96, and the Montreal Canadiens in 1976-77. The Bruins started the season with a win against the Capitals 5-2. They lost their first game three games later where they fought Ottawa Sanders 7-5. In the first month of October, they played really well. In fact, they only lost one game and had a record of 8-1-0. In November, it was even better. They continued to win many games and had a large winning streak of 7 during the month. This was a very good start and they only lost two games in two months, which is very impressive. In December, they just kept winning. They went 9-1-4. Another crazy month for the Bruins. They played their last game of the year against the Sabres and lost 4-3 in overtime. Their 2022 year record was was 28-4 and 4. The wins they received in just the first year is crazy. By this rate of wins, making the playoffs wasn't the main question. It was if they were the best NHL team right now. And it made sense. They only lost four times in regulation, which is crazy in three months. They started the 2023 year with a win against the Penguins 2-1. In January, it was one of their best months. They had the winning streaks of 4-6, and six, which gave them the great record of 10-3-1. February was even better. They had a huge winning streak of 10 and beat big teams in those 10 wins. They had not, they had not slowing down in them. They were only 2 points away from getting 100 points. And by the way, they are in March. They still have 2 full months left and they are already are going to get 100 points. March starts and what do you expect? They win many games, win many, many times, and on March 11th, the Bruins recorded their 50th win of the season in 64 games, becoming the fastest team to 50 wins in a season in NHL history. They also clinched the playoffs. They are the third fastest team to clinch a playoff berth. In March, in March, they had a record of 11-4-0 and a winning streak of seven. It didn't matter at all since they also since they also clinched the President's Trophy, but it didn't matter. They won all games of April and went 7-0-0. In the last 16 games. They won 15 and only lost one. Their overall season record was 65, 12, and 5, or 135 points. The Bruins clinched the President's Trophy. The Bruins broke the record for the most wins in the NHL season and the most points. This was an absolutely extraordinary season for the Bruins that the NHL will never forget. And this team was unstoppable and never had a bad month this season. The Bruins are playing as a second place team in the wild card, which are the Florida Panthers. The Panthers are barely squeezed in the playoffs and are highly doubted to lose this series, which makes sense. The Bruins had the best NHL season of all time, and this should be an easy series for them. In Game 1, the Bruins won a calm 3-1 game, not surprising. In Game 2, though, there, were, there was a huge surprise. The Panthers scored 6 and won the game 6-3. This was very surprising that the fact that the Panthers were able to score six. The Bruins, def the Bruins defense was solid this series and the season. However, in game three, they were able to recover and win 4-2. And in game four, it was even better and they won 6-2. This was a very smooth series for the Bruins and were expected they were going to win the series from a 3-1 lead. 
one more game, and they they can go through the second round. The Boston fans already have their winning caps on. But in game five, it's actually, it is actually close. It is 3-3, and it goes to overtime. And in overtime, the Panthers win, keeping them alive. For most people, the Panthers winning this game is just a waste of time, since the Bruins are going to win anyways. But the series isn't over yet. In game six, it is a high-scoring game. After the first and the second period, the Panthers lead 3-2, but in the third period, the Bruins scored 3 and the Panthers scored only 1, giving the Bruins the lead 5-4. They are expected to keep this lead to the end of the game, but the Panthers are able to score 3 more goals, giving them the lead and the win, forcing a Game 7. This was a very surprising to all NHL fans that the Bruins let a Game 7 happen. This should have been an easy series for them, but the Bruins are struggling. Game 7 is a winner to go home, and they need to win. They cannot embarrass themselves. Game 7 starts and the Panthers score the first goal, nobody else scores, which gives them the lead 1-0. In the second period, the Panthers score another, adding to their lead. As of right now, the Bruins are sweating. They cannot lose in this fashion. They have to come back, in which they did. The Bruins score 1 in the second period and 2 in the third period. The Bruins score 2 more now, giving them the lead. It was tough for them, but they were able to come back. They were holding the lead. There was a minute left. The Bruins were sure to win the series, but the Panthers had other plans. One minute left in the game, the Panthers scored, tying up the game and forcing another overtime. The Bruins are stunned and they now have to play in another overtime. In the overtime, the game is tied, but in 8 minutes and 35 seconds into the game, Carter Verhage scores for the Panthers, giving them the series. The Bruins are upset by the Panthers and they couldn't believe it. They are the best team in the league and they lose to the second place team, the wildcard team, in seven games. Not only that, they are the best team the NHL has ever seen. This is crazy and shocked the NHL world. The Boston Bruins season is now over. The point for the Bruins is David Pasternak with 113 points in 82 games. He crushed his career high in every stat, such as goals, assists, and points. He is an awesome goal scorer that can shoot from anywhere and score. He was only four goals off from, from becoming the highest goal scorer this season. He was truly a great player for this team, for his great team. Now there is a big difference of points after Pasternak. Next in line is Brad Marshall with 67 points in 73 games. Big difference. He's been with this team for the entire career of 14 seasons. This wasn't his great season, but he still played a good role in the team. Patrice Bergeron is next with 58 points in 78 games. Like Marshall, he has been with this team for his entire career of 19 seasons. Unfortunately, he did retire after this season. He slid in throughout the season, but he was still pretty decent and an impact on this team. There are more players on the team, such as Pavel Zaka, David Krejci, Hampus Lindholm, and Charlie. Charlie McAvoy, Mac- McAvoy, who had all had a good impact on his team, but the first three players I mentioned impacted the most. Now let's go down to the goalies. There were three goalies, Keith Kincaid, Linus Olmark, and Jeremy Swayman. Keith Kincaid play- only played one game. I don't really count it since he doesn't even play for Boston right now. So there's really only ne- Linus Olmark and Jeremy Swayman. Mr. Swayman, he played 37 games, had a record of 24-6-4, had a 2.27 goals allowed average and 0.920 save percentage. Really good season for him. Well, did the defense play a big role? Yes, they did. But he still needed to stop some shots, and he did that. He did his job. He did his job perfectly. A very low goals allowed average, which is amazing. 2.27 is really good. And at 0.920 save percentage, also very good save percentage. Linus Olmark is next. He had played 49 games, had a 46 and 1 record, had a 1.89 goals allowed average, and a 0.938 save percentage. There was absolutely zero doubt he was the best goalie of this season. I mean, 1.89 goals allowed average. I don't know if that's the record of that many games. That could have been. I didn't research on that. But that is such a goal, such a low goals allowed average. It's crazy. It, it just, seeing that there's a 1 in there. Is crazy and also a point nine thirty eight save percentage is really good and solid. The defense did play a good, big role in the goals allowed average, but he still needed to save a lot of shots, and he did that. He did his job. He did such. He did such. He had such a good season, and without these two goalies, it, it wouldn't be that that different. But it was still a very big impact on this team. Now let's move on to the team stats. Boston is second in face-off win percentage with 54.5 safe face-off win percentage. Really good face-off win percentage. Now, Boston, they should probably, they're probably last. They're not. They're actually 25th with 29.8 shots per game. That's still really good. Shots against per game. Shots for Boston is 9th with 33 shots. That's over the shots against, which is good. They're a penalty kill. 
is first with 87% penalty kill. That's a very good penalty kill. You need that. They are a great team, which makes sense why they're such a big penalty kill percentage. Power play, Boston is 12th with 22.2. Not ideal. It's not too bad. Could be better as it's such a great team. Their goals allowed, 174 goals allowed. That's it. That's crazy. That is less than two goals a game, I believe. No, that might be over two goals a game. Still, amazing. A complete, how many? I can count this. 36 change. 36 goal change from Carolina, which is crazy. Very good defense, which makes sense why their plus and minus is huge. Their team plus and minus is so huge. Boston Bruins second goals for 301 goals. Boston Bruins. I mean, do I really have the same thing? 135 points, 65 wins in one season. Very, very, very good season for Boston. Unfortunately, that they got eliminated so early when that's hockey and hockey is going to happen. Very good season for the Bruins. Now, it's my overall opinion about Boston. I think that they are one of the best teams in the league and will stay that way. They just broke the win record. It would be very surprising that they would be, be bad next season. They have a good young core, great coaches, good goals, and a good chemistry run team, which is the definition of a great team. On my last note, I think the Bruins are a great team that will stay that way for years. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. We are getting so close to ending this series. There are two more episodes left. And those are the two Stanley Cup uh, finalists, which are the Florida Panthers and the Vegas Golden Knights. We all know how it ended. Two more games left. Probably going to be one of the longest videos. Vegas probably may be a little bit shorter than the Devils video, because that Devils is the longest video we have right now. But it's getting exhausting. I'm actually kind of happy it's going over. It's a lot of work, but I'm, I'm willing to do this. So yeah. Uh, hope you guys like this video. If you like the video, you know, like it. If you don't like it, then I don't know what I can say. Comment down below your opinion. If you agree, if you disagree, if you like the out on anything, I'm, I will sure to reply back. And yeah, hope you guys enjoy the video. Hope you guys stay safe and have a great day. See ya.